Wealth and success are two things that most people seek after, yet if you were to ask two people side by side what the meaning of those two words are, they would truly have different answers and not agree upon what success or what wealth is. Well, friends, today what I want to give you is another perspective of what wealth is, what wealth means, and how truly you have the ability to not only obtain it, but you probably are already wealthy just where you are today. And then we'll talk about some words for us to focus on so that we can not only achieve wealth today, but continue it for future generations and the legacy that we are leaving behind. My name is Ricky Jones Jr. and I love to in these episodes and even more than anything desire God's best for your life and whatever your purpose or your destiny is I look at me as a seed I am a seed that has been sown into your life so that you can bloom blossom and develop into the person that you were designed purpose and destined to be and so today like I said we're gonna be talking about the word wealth largely because going into the new year a lot of us have wealth goals or financial goals or success goals but yet here today, we'll be talking about tools and words that will allow for us not only to have them as goals, but allow for the, us to see them as a reality in our lives. And for those that don't know, I love using a word as a foundation for us to be able to go forth or to pursue the things that are on the inside of us to do. And so here today, we'll be reading in 1 Timothy chapter 6, which, you know, oftentimes this passage, if you will, of scripture is quoted because it's it's one of the ones that has a lot of controversy around it. However, I'm going to skip over that verse today, not because I want to avoid controversy. However, I don't want us to be distracted from the message that we have today. And so here in the book of Timothy, we have Paul speaking to Timothy. Just as you see me or you hear me speaking to you, you can look at the words that are written today as somebody speaking to another person that they honor, that they cherish, that they want the best for and the best out of their lives. And so Paul being the mentor, Paul being the person that Timothy looks up to, I want us to read it with that lens as Paul is speaking to Timothy or Paul is speaking to us or Paul wants the best out of us or for us for our lives ahead. And here in chapter six, verse six, we'll start there by saying, Yet, true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. I'm going to read that again because so much has been said already and I don't want us to miss it. Yet, true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. So here, Paul's even let Timothy know, hey, you already have wealth if you have contentment as well as true godliness, which is so fun, right? And before I lose you, I want to keep reading because we're going to talk about it all. And then it goes on to say, after all, we brought nothing with us when we came into this world and we can't take anything with us when we leave. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content, which we know content is synonymous with wealth, okay? all in the right context. But then I'm gonna jump down to verse 11. It says, but you, Timothy, are a great man of God. So run from all these evil things, pursue righteousness and a godly life, along with faith, love, and gentleness. Fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you, which you have confessed so well before many witnesses. And so, friends, Let's go ahead and unpack what has been said so that we can operate with the wealth that we have or may come into the reality that we have had and that we could continue on. And so here Paul is talking to Timothy as I'm talking to you with the understanding that for us to recognize the wealth that we have, we can operate or we should operate with true godliness and contentment, which contentment is a word that oftentimes rattles us or doesn't allow for us to have comfort because it if you are like me, right, or as an American, we like to strive for more. We like to go for more. We want more. We want all of that's in store and then some more, right? And here, Timothy is letting or letting us know that for us, we have wealth. When we recognize and realize the contentment of 
our surroundings or the simple fact of if we have enough clothing to wear clothes today and clothes tomorrow, right? If we have enough food for us today as well as food for tomorrow, we already have a level of wealth for us to be thankful for. If we operate with true godliness, what does that even mean, right? Because it's it's beautiful words put together. However, what are the actions that fulfill the words that we read? Well, true godliness is operating in a way that gives love to others or that gives the advantage to others or that seeks to do well for others, even if well doesn't come right back to us. True godliness is one in which we can operate through the very words that we say, or in other words, if we say we're gonna be a place, or if we say we're gonna do a thing, or if we say that we will give, name the thing, then we are those that fulfill the obligations or the words that we say that we're gonna do. And so can somebody count on you? Can somebody trust the words that you're saying that you will then act on those words? Those are the actions, those are the things that allow for us to operate with true godliness being people of integrity, operating in love, giving the giving people the advantage as well as being those that are representation of what is good. Doing those things a lot for us to operate with true godliness and even saying those things, I just want you to think. I want you to think and rest upon the life that you've already lived thus far in 2024 or the life that you've already lived in the previous years. Have you operated with true godliness? And whether or not the answer is yes or the answer is no, today could be the day where you put a stake in the ground and you say, going forward, I will operate with true godliness and then as well he says and with contentment is itself wealth what is contentment how can we look at the word contentment positively is probably what we're even thinking about right now well contentment gives us the ability to be grateful and thankful for what we have oftentimes we look at what other people have or what other people are doing or how other people are blessed or where other people are vacationing or what brands other people are wearing right shouts out to instagram facebook tiktok and youtube or whatever social media platform Form, you may find yourself scrolling on and seeing what other people have, which then will make you discontent. The opposite of being content, being discontent of what other people or what you have because of what you see other people having, doing, going, receiving, speaking, saying, thinking, creating, right? You list it. We all have been in that space and I can even raise my hand to say I've been in a space at times where I was discontent with what I have, discontent discontent with what we were doing, discontent what the Jones family have going forward because I was looking at what other people were doing, having, going, able to receive, and it made me discontent. However, today, we're erasing those thoughts. We're coming into the knowledge of what we can do, of what we should do, so that we can realize the wealth that we actually have today, and it allows for us to be content. Be thankful, be grateful for what you have, for where you're going, for your ability to call a place home, for your ability to go places freely, right? Because there are people even today, in this day, that are trapped, locked in jail or prison and can't even go outside. Just the ability to walk outside the door or the ability to walk to your neighbor's house or the ability to drive to the store, go to a destination is something even to be grateful for. And let us not take for granted those opportunities. And so even as we look ahead to realize and recognize the wealth that we have, obviously we know contentment is one of those things. Operating with true godliness is another one of those things. But then even so beautifully, it was written by Paul, said to Timothy again, Again, that for us to pursue righteousness and a godly life. And so this is so great because I am one that was raised in a church and have the awareness of other churches, doctrines and ways and customs and things like that and traditions. And so even with the word godliness, or more importantly, it says uh, pursue righteousness. Okay. And so even with righteousness, oftentimes in the church setting, it was understood that you were righteous based off of how you dressed or or the way you conducted yourself or the long dresses or the suits and ties or the list goes on, which 
confirmed or denied the fact that you were righteous in your living. However, I just want you to know that the outer garments are representations of the inner change, the inner garments, the inner way in which you conduct yourself, you think of yourself, you speak to yourself, you see yourself, right? Because we know we live life from the inside out, who I am in relation to others, who I am and where I go, who I am and what I do is a true reflection of who I am on the inside. So for us to to be able to operate with righteousness is for us to have right thoughts, right mindset, right viewpoint from within that we will inevitably live on the outside. And so I say all that to say, you, my friend, can operate with true righteousness today, right? With the understanding that I operate with a right standing, with a right viewpoint, with a right mindset of myself as well as others. We can operate with righteousness and a godly life which we already talked about and also along with faith so here are the words for us to focus on as we go ahead in our faith or in our wealth in our success let us use these words faith love perseverance and gentleness which i want to talk about these because they all are unique and where they are and what they are and how we can find them operating in our lives so faith what is faith faith is a fun word and i love the word because i've grown to recognize its true ability and potential and power in our lives as we have and i say we the jones family has operated in and through faith throughout our journey and so faith as the Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Well, more importantly, let me start from the beginning. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Therefore, faith gives us the ability to believe what we either don't see today or what we aren't operating in today. But faith says it can happen. Faith says we will. Faith says we can. Faith says we can conquer or have what is yet to be seen or to be conquered. That is faith. And so when we operate in faith, a lot of us are being operating in faith because we believe a thing even before we see a thing. Some people say, you know, seeing is believing. Well, I believe that when we believe, we receive, right? And it's only a matter of time in which we have. Believe, receive, have. And in between those words is time. However, boom, there's faith. And I want you to know you have faith. You have faith when you walk to or walk in a room uh, and then you hit a switch. There's faith that the lights are going to come on at the end of the day. Why, do, why is it faith? Why, 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 Ricky, can you say that is a way of operating in faith? Because you don't know how the electricity works. You don't know if that switch is connected to the breaker that will then turn on and power the lights to that specific room. You don't know that. However, you believe. And because you believe, you receive the lights in that space or in that room. And so many other spaces and places where you use faith for you to say, hey, friend, right? You may be on the telephone. Well, I don't know. A lot of people, is, I don't really like talking on the phone. And so you may send a message. Hey, I'm about to be at the mall in 15 minutes. That's operating and speaking in faith because you don't know what can happen from point A to point B. And no, I'm not trying to speak doom and gloom over your life. I just want you to know that you operate in spaces and places of faith in your life already. And so if you already do it, you already have the power to continue to do it and to see it operate in many different different spaces and places in your life going forward. And so faith, right? We have faith, but then we also are to use love, which we already talked about with true godliness. Love is a beautiful thing. I love and enjoy talking about love because I know it's love that saved me. I know it's love that changed me. It's love that allowed for me to see things in a whole nother way with a fresh new perspective and to give me a boldness and an energy to continue in life. And so for us, operating in love. I heard it once said that love seeks to give the advantage, not take the advantage. Therefore, when we're operating in love, we're seeing how we can benefit those that are around us, even without it being reciprocated to us, right? Because if it was reciprocated, then it's a deal. I'm doing something knowing that you're going to do something for me. However, love says I'm going to do whether or not you do for me, just for the simple fact, because I'm operating in love and I want what's best for you. So let us allow for faith 
as well as love to be things that we focus on as well as perseverance and then i have one more perseverance i enjoy talking about perseverance because it's that ability for us to keep on keeping on you know what i'm saying like i said i was raised in the church so that's one of the phrases in which it's said within the church keep on keeping on or in other words at first you don't succeed dust yourself off and try again okay i heard the great poet Aaliyah say such words in a beautiful song that was sung by her however in all that is being said and <laughs> all that is being said we have to keep going if it doesn't work out immediately because that's what usually is the deterrent of people being able to persevere because things don't happen immediately things don't take place as fast as you want them to take place things don't and a Accomplishes aren't had immediately. However, for us with the mindset of, okay, going forward, not only do we have to, you know, love, not only do we operate in faith that we've already been operating in, but perseverance is something that we have to do. It means that we have to keep going, press on, don't stop. I heard it once said as well, I will not quit, therefore I cannot be defeated. That is wrapped up in the word perseverance. We are gonna keep going. The only way for you to lose is for you to quit. The only way for you to lose or to be conquered is for you to stop. So let us persevere. If it doesn't work out the first time, keep going. See it from another angle or another dimension or another way or another facet that will allow for us to persevere or in other words keep going so that's another one of the tools that we have in the tool belt and last but not least as it's written here we also operate with gentleness and gentleness is so cool right even saying the word makes you calm down mellow wow you know and even speak from that perspective however with gentleness it allows for us to be compassionate it allows for us to have mercy it allows for us to extend grace and so even with those words that i use as it pertains to gentleness it empowers us to love people right where they are love our clients right where they are love people that we look to seek to give a product or a service to right where they are and not to be so rushed or so quick to write them off or so rushed or so quick to say that it can't happen or it won't happen but be gentle be calm have patience have mercy extend love to people in which you've extended love to before so not only do we operate with love but then we love them with gentleness which allows for us to in other words have a long suffering right which is so cool and so fun however when we allow for all these tools these words these things to focus on and to focus our attention and actions through wealth is what comes success is what takes place joy is what we get to operate in each and every day and ladies and gentlemen i want that for you just as much as i want that for myself and more importantly i know we will see us operating and having wealth this year this uh, month you know what i'm saying if we get a true grasp of the words that were spoken of today and even if there's somebody in your life that you're like okay i hear what is being said ricky i receive what you're saying however i want wealth for them as well i want wealth for my neighbor or my friend or my partner or my spouse share this episode with them because i desire and i can see a space and a place or a world where we can all operate and have have wealth if we allow for the wealth words allow for the actions of wealth the actions of success to be our guide to be our lane to be our path that we operate in and continue on each and every day and so ladies and gentlemen know that wealth is something that you probably already are sitting on probably already have because you're operating with true godliness as well as contentment with where you are because that my friend is a great wealth well, however, as well, if something that we're seeking after joy in which we are longing for, well, we know the words in which we can have to focus on. And I'm going to read it again because I don't want to misread it. How about that? We will pursue righteousness and a godly life. We will also operate with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness and all the different 
things that we are endeavoring to do or fulfilling the life that we know that we are to pursue as well as the destiny that God has already placed for us to fulfill. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pursue the lifestyle that brings you joy. And that lifestyle is wrapped up in you pursuing purpose and operating in your purpose. Or in other words, operating within the person that God has designed and crafted you to be. You already know what brings you joy. You already know what passions you have. And when you put actions to those passions, purpose is ignited joy is felt happiness is seen and longevity is what you will have and so my friends continue on press on have a joyous great day share subscribe follow all the different things that you can do on youtube if you're watching on youtube or your favorite podcast platform to stay locked in to what we're doing on this here podcast and the ways in which we're looking ahead and even speaking ahead on thursday i'm excited because we're going to tap into that word prosper which is a fun word within uh believers and things like that however i want you to see the word that word in a way that will allow for you to be excited about what's to come and allow for you to recognize that in all ways you can prosper whatever you put your hand to will prosper and so tap in tune in on thursday and until then great people operate in wealth Realize the wealth that you have today and forevermore. Peace!